All right, so this last um, application of derivatives problem is about mosquitoes. And I kind of like these questions where there's some kind of meaning in them. So the number of mosquitoes in a field after major rainfall is modeled by the function m, where m of t is that, and t is the number of days after the rainfall ended, and t is between 0 and 18. So they told you, which I think this, because this is supposed to be a non-calculator question, they didn't want you to have to like square 15 and do a bunch of arithmetic with it um, without a calculator. They told you what m prime of 15 is. Um, don't be surprised because you can use a calculator on the test that you would actually have to calculate the derivative and then plug in the 15, which is not a big deal, especially since this is a polynomial. But anyway, uh, we're going to explain the meaning of it in the context of the problem. So the 15 is the number of days. So we would say at t equals 15 days. And it might be smart if we say after the rainfall ended. I don't think that's necessary though, but won't hurt anything and just use the words in the problem. All right, the number of mosquitoes, so we're still using the words in the problem. Okay, now it's important that um, you know that this is a rate. So m prime is a rate. So the number of mosquitoes in a field is, because it's a negative value, um, decreasing at a rate of 171 mosquitoes per day. The next question, based on the model, what is the absolute maximum number of mosquitoes in the field over the time interval? So when you guys see absolute maximum or absolute minimum, I want you to remember what we talked about with the candidates. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to hold an election for maximum. And we have to identify the candidates. And the candidates are going to be the endpoints of your interval and the critical numbers or critical values or critical points, whatever you want to call it. And the critical numbers are when the derivative is zero or undefined. Now this is never, derivative is never going to be undefined because uh, it's polynomial, but um, it, depending on what kind of function you have, it could be undefined and it could like have a, a sharp turn and that's where a maximum would be. Okay, so let's just go ahead and put in the endpoints because those are the ones that are the easiest to forget about. So I'm going to put in 0 and 18 from our interval. All right, to find when the function is 0, we are going to need to find the derivative of the function. And then we'll set that equal to zero. So I'm going to factor out a negative three and set it equal to zero at the same time. Yeah, so we do get two critical numbers, um, but the critical number is negative four is not in our interval and doesn't really make sense um, because it's negative four days before the rain ended would, I guess, be during the rain, but it doesn't really make sense. So we have um, three candidates, and then we're going to hold an election, and when we hold the election, we plug those into the original function, the number of mosquitoes function. So when we put in zero, we zero. We put in 12, we get um, 1,728. And then when we put in 18, we get four, sorry, we get 648. So 
So it is obvious that candidate 12 won. And make sure we answer the question. So we want the absolute maximum number of mosquitoes. It doesn't say which day was their maximum number. It would be the 12th day. Um, we actually want to know the number of mosquitoes, which is this. So that's that thing I talked about where um, you're figuring out where does the maximum live or what is the maximum. So this one is what is the maximum. Okay, so we would say the absolute maximum number of mosquitoes. over the time interval from 0 to 18 is this is how they gave it I feel like they would also accept just 1,728 mosquitoes But if you say 12, it is nothing. You get no points for the answer. Because 12 is definitely not the maximum. 12 is where the maximum occurs. Okay. So for C, we want to find the values of T um, when the rate of change of the number of mosquitoes is increasing. So if we want to find when the rate of change is increasing, we're going to find when m prime of t is increasing. And that would mean we would want to find the derivative of it and when where that derivative is positive. So let's go ahead and find the second derivative of m which is the derivative of the derivative. So you just use the power rule to find that. And we're gonna find when that is equal to zero. And that's gonna be um, on the fourth day. All right, now we're just going from zero to 10. All right, and then we can pick any number in those intervals and plug them into the second derivative. I just randomly picked those and all we need to know is if we get positive or negative. Alright, so because in the interval between 0 and 4 we have a positive, that is where the rate of change is increasing. So that one was kind of tricky. Um, you just need to pay really close attention to the wording of what it's asking. I expect that there will be lots of math problems written about the coronavirus. Like finding the point of inflection when the rate of change of growth or the, the f how fast the people were being infected per day. It starts decreasing like when we turn the corner. So I'm interested to see that. Okay, so for this last one, it's about it's a new function about bats. So the number of bats in the field is modeled by the differentiable function b, where b is a function of the number of mosquitoes in the field. Based on the models, write an expression for the rate of change in the number of bats. So b is a function of the number of bats. So we're using a for our time. 
So that represents the number of baths. So based on the models, write an expression for the rate of change in the number of bats. So that's asking us to find B prime of M of A. And so that looks like we're going to have to do the chain rule. So um, we would do B prime of M of A, and we would have to multiply that by the derivative of M of A using the chain rule. All right, and so that's going to be b prime. Now, m of a, we would just take our original m of t function and put a in for t. And then m prime of a, take our derivative we found and put a in for t. And that's all we can do. Again, that's kind of a weird problem.